Last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again. It seemed to me I stood by the iron gate leading to the drive, and for a while I could not enter, for the way was barred to me. There was a padlock and a chain upon the gate. I called in my dream to the lodge keeper and had no answer. And peering closer through the rusted spokes of the gate, I saw that the lodge was uninhabited. No smoke came from the chimney, and the little lattice windows gaped forlorn. Then, like all dreamers, I was possessed of a sudden with supernatural powers and passed like a spirit through the barrier before me. The drive wound away in front of me, twisting and turning as it's always done. But as I advanced, I was aware that a change had come upon it. It was narrow and unkept, not the drive that we had known. At first I was puzzled and did not understand. And it was only when I bent my head to avoid the low swinging branch of a tree that I realized what had happened. Nature had come into her own again, and little by little, in her stealthy, insidious ways, had encroached upon the drive with long, tenacious fingers. The woods, always a menace even in the past, had triumphed in the end. They crowded dark and uncontrolled to the borders of the drive. The beaches with white naked limbs leant close to one another, their branches intermingled in a strange embrace making a vault above my head like the archway of a church. And there were other trees as well, trees that I did not recognize, squat oaks and tortured elms that struggled cheek by jowl with the beeches, and had thrust themselves out of the quiet earth, along with monster shrubs and plants, none of which I remembered. The drive was a ribbon now, a thread of its former self, with gravel surface gone and choked with grass and moss, the trees had thrown out low branches, making an impediment to progress. The gnarled roots looked like skeleton claws. Scattered here and again amongst the jungle growth, I would recognize shrubs that had been landmarks in our time. Things of culture and grace, hydrangeas whose blue heads had been famous. No hand to check their progress. They had gone native now, rearing to monster height without a bloom, black and ugly as the nameless parasites that grew beside them. On and on, now east, now west, wound the poor thread that had once been our drive. Sometimes I thought it lost, but it appeared again beneath a fallen tree perhaps, or struggling on the other side of a muddy ditch created by the winter rains. I had not thought the way so long. Surely the miles had multiplied, even as the trees had done, and this path led but to a labyrinth, some choked wilderness, and not to the house at all. I came upon it suddenly, the approach masked by the unnatural growth of a vast shrub that spread in all directions, and I stood my heart thumping in my breast, the strange prick of tears behind my eyes. There was Mandalay, our Mandalay, secretive and silent as it had always been, the grey stone shining in the moonlight of my dream, the mullioned windows reflecting the green lawns and the terrace. Time could not wreck the perfect symmetry of those walls, nor the sight itself, a jewel in the hollow of a hand.